idea for this project was relatively simple on paper, uh, but it was a little bit more complicated to actually pull off. And that was, we wanted to team up with Elia Licardi here. He's one of the most followed landscape photographers on the internet today. We were gonna go to six or seven different countries around the world, and we were going to film like 30 or 35 different photography lessons at different locations, and then come back and film all the post-processing that goes along with that as well. And when we were talking about coming up with this, we knew, you know, not only do we want this tutorial to be the best tutorial that we've ever made, but we also wanted it to be the most beautiful tutorial that we had ever made. And so I think there was no question in my mind we had to bring a quadcopter with us to get aerial footage. I think when we really started talking about how this project was going to be put together, we knew we were going to end up with an extraordinary amount of content to teach. It was really important to us that people are not only engaged with the content, but they also felt like they were a part of it as well. And we're a small team, so we really wanted to bring the right tools with us to be able to make this production as beautiful as possible. I think one thing that I realized that the aerial footage really helped with was showing the scale of what we were actually photographing. Because we were standing near you in a lot of these different locations, and you know, we, we can shoot uh, you know, at eye level, and the video footage will look very similar to the actual photograph that you take. But then when you can take a helicopter up, you know, a half mile, a mile away, and then actually show what the entire scene looks like, to me, it, it just completely changed the whole vibe of the scene. It really made the people who watch this tutorial feel like they were there. They get a, a, a view that even we didn't get to have when we were there. So that was really cool. And from a production and editing standpoint, having something always to cut back to was so valuable to us because you don't want a video just to be a talking head, you know, cutting from A camera to B camera, A camera to B camera. And so having this awesome B-roll footage that we could, you know, shoot near you or way far away from you, someplace that we could never actually get to ourselves, uh, that was a huge help to us. Remember that shot when we first got to Alderfoss, we started really low and I was set up shooting right precariously right on that edge and I just remember I didn't know you were actually starting the Phantom because it was so loud and then all of a sudden this thing just flies right by me on the left. I think that like out of all the countries we went to I think that is my favorite drone footage and we weren't particularly high, we weren't doing any crazy moves but that first shot that we started low and just kind of reveal this incredible waterfall and then I got this really nice spinning shot around you on that cliff um, that was unbelievable um, I, and I feel like that footage has become my memory of that location you know it was amazing to be there in person but over time I kind of forget what it was like but I can go back to that reveal shot that's what it felt like to actually be there for me yeah, I think a lot of people that have these drones or think about aerial photography, they think to themselves that, well, I'm gonna get this and I'm gonna go two miles away and just, you know, show how far away I can get with my shots. But we actually found that our favorite shots were relatively close. And in many cases, we were creating movements that we could have created if we had had some dolly system or slider or some jib, but it was so much easier and just as steady to do it with the Phantom 2. And so we might just do a very simple slider shot, or we might go up just slightly above your head to kind of reveal what you were looking at over the top of the camera. And so we definitely got the super wide shots from angles that we could never get to with normal camera gear. But by the time we actually got towards the end of the project, we weren't even bringing the jib and the slider with us anymore. If you remember, we were just doing everything with the, uh, with the Phantom. After we were done filming this project, I actually went on to a few different countries and I was able to pick up one of the early Phantom 3s. And what blew me away is we had some experience filming in Italy and Rome, but it was kind of difficult for us because we, we really had to pay attention to Phantom in the city kind of environment. So it was really tricky for us to get far away from some of our targets or really see what we were trying to hit. So when I had the Phantom 3 in Rome, I was able to fly a little bit further away than I was usually comfortable with and I was able to set up these really beautiful shots and be able to control exactly what was in frame. And what really blew me away about the new system with the Phantom 3, not just the 4K video and the non-distortion and everything like that, was actually being able to hold this completely still and get these beautiful shots where I could get these traffic veins going in and out of Rome. And I was actually able to fly over the Vatican, which 
in hindsight might not have been the best idea, but I got this beautiful sunset and this beautiful footage. And I remember I was trying to get these really nice slow camera moves, but then I just stopped and it was so pretty. I just started staring at the screen and I left it there for a while. And I was just watching the traffic move and just watching the scene change. And I was blown away by how stable it was. That's something that after seeing the footage that you got with the new Phantom that I feel like you've done a great job with that I never really considered is just taking the drone up to uh, you know some location and leaving it steady. I think some of my favorite shots that you got of Rome and Cinque Terre were uh, just completely stationary. You did one shot where you went up and looked straight down and you did a spin move and that was something that I had never really thought to do but it looked awesome. Yeah, one of the benefits to shooting at 2.7K or 4K, but then down sampling to 1080p to export is that you have all these extra pixels to play with. So if there is a little bit of wind and there's a little bit of movement going on, you can stabilize that in post and make it look perfect before you actually export it. And uh, I, I don't have any cameras besides my GoPro right now that can shoot 4K and kind of makes me want to switch over to everything to shoot 4K just so that I can have more to play with in 1080. Before each lesson, we ended up doing this kind of montage of the scene, Aliyah getting to the scene, Aliyah scouting the location, Aliyah hiking through the area. And, you know, we got standard shots with our DSLRs and telephoto lenses and stuff. But then we realized, well, we can just hold the Phantom and turn on the gimbal so that it stabilizes it. And then I can just walk with the Phantom and the GoPro and get perfectly stabilized walking footage that wouldn't have been really easy to capture if I was flying. And so that was kind of a huge eye opener for me. And I, I said to you multiple times, I was like, somebody needs to make this product that can take a camera and put it on this little gimbal that's already built onto the, the uh, drone. And then the second we got home, they started coming out. So I was a little late, late on that. But um, yeah, it's a complete game changer now. You used to have to have a steady cam and the vest and the arm, and now you can have this little thing that's about this big and just walk behind people. And that's what really blew me away was, was how much we started to rely on it. Little yeah. by little, we were leaving gear behind. And for a small, you know, two plus one filming team, this was great because it was lightweight, easy to carry around, and easy to get all those really cool shots that we needed. Yeah, I agree. I think I'm, I'm personally incredibly impressed that that drone survived that entire trip. Not just because of my flying, I did crash it a couple of times, very easy crashes, but just the conditions, like we were flying it in snow and sleet and hail and mist. Like I was going through the mist of so many different waterfalls in Iceland. Um, I mean, it was raining all the time wherever we were and we'd put it up anyway and the wind, at the beginning, I was very careful. If it was windy at all, I wasn't putting it up. But by the end of this project, I was like, let's throw it up, let's do it. And it did great. It would just, with that GPS, it would just completely crab into the wind and stabilize itself. And uh, I can't believe it. I, I don't know any other drone that's been around the world twice and been to so many different countries. Um, but it survived the entire thing. I think it was great to have the chance to to really work in context when we had the Phantom 2 in Iceland and all the different countries that we filmed in. And it was great to have this tool to just ramp up our production value for photographing the world. I mean, I really now, looking back at doing the project, I can't see doing it without a Phantom 2. Or now it would be a Phantom 3 or even maybe an Inspire. But regardless, it's just, it's changed my perspective on what's possible with a small crew or even just, just me just out in nature trying to get these shots, it's really changed my perspective on what I can get and these, these unique perspectives that would have otherwise been unavailable to me.